disclaimer, any snowflakes out there, switch off, right then. HMS Dryad, this is where you go to learn your trade, your branch. Uh, mine was radar, so HMS Rally, we passed out. Um, I'd finished HMS Rally, on to HMS Dryad now, so now onto my radar training. There was three types of radar, CATS, CASE and ADOR. Hadn't a clue, like I told you, I just winged it. I'd winged it through rally. Um, now I was gonna wing it through radar school. Remember, I had no qualifications. And when I was in the careers office, I lied. I told them I had English, <laughs> maths. I told them I had like B's, C's, A's. I just lied, completely lied. I'm now at HMS Dryad, ready to learn radar. I had no qualifications. Uh, if anyone lied on their CV, this was me. And like I told you, I was heavily dyslexic. So, as I stated, free radar, cat's case Ador. I picked Ador because my mate John picked it. I have one of my best mates called John Hunt, who, was, who I'd been with Polo 45, we'd gone to Dryad. He would pick Ador's, I picked Ador's. Didn't have a clue what it was. Um, day one, teacher radar. Radio aid the determine direction and range. That's it, that's radar. Then they teach you which, which, which radar do you wanna do? So I picked ADORS, John picked ADORS. Action, data, automated weapon systems. Oh, that sounds fucking good, didn't it? So I did that. It, it was hard. It, they, give you this, they give you this book to write in. And what you have to do is every day, they would write on the board. You would have to write into your book. Then when you got back to your barracks, you would then write it into another book. And their way of thinking is if you look at it on the screen, write it in one book, write it, it sticks in your head. First exam's okay, but with radar, you have to get 90% pass rate or you're off. You know, I think you're allowed two or three strikes and you were gone. And the only thing available to you then, you could become a steward, which looking after the officers. Oh, I fucking wasn't gonna do that. So the first exam was okay. I'd copied John. Um, I, I even sat in the exam on copying John. And, and that was okay. But then the second week, they, they test you on what you learned in the first week and second week gets a little bit harder. And by the time you get to, I can't remember, it was six or six or seven or eight weeks, you've got to remember eight weeks worth of stuff. And then you've got simulators. And it was hard, very, very hard. And I come close to nearly failing. But for some unknown reason, I got through. So now I'm like qualified radar passed out. At the beginning of the course, they ask you like, do you want to do um, sonar? Which was an option. And I remember him one day taking me onto a sub. Well, or whole group. So we're all we're all going on this sub. I remember just getting in, and I'm under the under the, under the fucking I forgot what they're called now. But I'm stepping through the hatches, stepping over the next hatch, the next. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, this is like if I want to if I'm going to die in the navy, I don't want to die in here. I remember these captains saying, "Oh yeah, by the way, um." Yeah, this is where you sleep. And these bunks really tight and they go, it's called hot bunking. So one person jumps in because there is no space on the subs. And then when they've finished sleeping, they roll up the sleeping bag and then the next bloke jumps in that bunk. It's called hot bunking. And the only good thing about submarines is when they go along alongside, when, when they go like to a port like America or like say like New York or something like that, when, whenever they pull up alongside, they haven't got anywhere to sleep. Whereas on the ships, you've got places to sleep, you've got your own designated bunk and that will always be your bunk. If you're in America, you go ashore, you come back, you sleep in your bunk, you go ashore, you come back. On the submarines, they haven't got it because they haven't got the capacity. So they get hotels. So in submarines, that was the only perk of becoming a submariner. And we used to call them crab mariners because they walk sideways because they fucking stunk. So that was a nickname for them, crab mariners. And God, did they stink. Um, so that was the only perks about being a submariner. <laughs> um, you, you got a hotel when you went alongside. And one of the main things, apart from the confined spaces, was when you went to, they took you to the submariner's training college, wherever that was. 
And I remember there was these big tubes and everything, and they were like going, oh yeah, you have to do a special training where you go in a tube and you go fucking flying up the tube if you if you get hit by a torpedo. And I'm thinking, you ain't gonna fucking survive that. When have you ever heard some mariners surviving? They're just, just giving false hope. So some mariners were not for me. So I've passed out ADORs. It's now time to get allocated ships. I knew nothing about the Navy absolutely nothing and my mate john gets his gets his paper and he goes oh hms illustrious i'm like what's that it's aircraft carrier i looked at mine hms arc royal i'm like what's that and he's like going fucking hell you got a premier warship of a fleet you've actually got an aircraft carrier as well so I was like, you joking? He went, no, no, you're actually on an aircraft car. You're on one of the best, you're in the premier warship of a fleet. And I ain't got a clue. But what I didn't realize was Adel's radar system was only fitted on aircraft carriers and destroyers, which were really good ships to be on. Cats, um, cats and case radar systems were like frigates and little mine warfare ships. So just by chance, absolute chance, like the, the luck of a draw, well, I picked Adels. So I was always ever gonna be on aircraft carriers or destroyers, which were the better ships. So there I was, fully fledged radar operator, and it was time to have an adventure on the most premier warship of the fleet, HMS Ark Royal. What an adventure it was.